Come on in and join me as we focus our energy. Look at the cosmos, pick some cards, and align our energy for the week. Come on in and join me. Let me know if you're here. Give me a thumbs up. Let me know if you can hear me. Sound is always a big issue. Come on in and join me. Over here on Facebook, hey Paul, coming in on Facebook Live as well. All right, yay, got a thumbs up. Come on in and join me. Take a little time tonight. Pull our energy in. Talk about the cosmos. A lot going on. Definitely a lot going on this week. Share it out if you can. Come on in and join me. Hey, Ava. Let me see if I can see it everywhere I need to, and then we'll start. So give it a share. Let me know you're here. If you have a question for Spirit, go ahead and post that question. If you want me to draw a card for a particular reason for you, let me know. All right, I'm looking for it over here on Facebook. Here we go. Going to share it out. I'm going to share it into my Empowered Spirit group. If you're not in my group, I'd love to have you in there. Talk about lots of things. Okay, yay. All right. I think I've got it shared everywhere. <sighs> okay, let's begin. Welcome, everyone. Terry Ann Hyman here. This is my live stream video for the Empowered Spirit Show podcast, where I come on live, we talk about the cosmos, we look to the cards, and we align our energy together. So welcome, welcome, welcome. So much going on in the cosmos. A lot of shifting going on. As we talked about last week, we've got the sun season of Scorpio, all that energy coming forward. I know the last couple of days have been really intense for a lot of people because that energy of Scorpio is about intensity. It's about the intuitive. It's about going deep within. It's about asking yourself questions. Where am I? What's going on? Why am I feeling the way I'm feeling? So it can be a little intense. I know I have Scorpio rising, so I can really relate to this. Lots of times we just kind of have to deal with some of those deeper, darker parts of who we are in order to grow. And that's what this energy is about. And now we have the new moon. The new moon comes in tonight, probably about another hour. So I think it's like 1030 around that time this evening. And that new moon energy is also in Scorpio. So it's also asking you to go deeper within. New moons are all about setting new intentions, right? And also it doesn't necessarily have to be brand new. It's also about refreshing your intentions. It's also about putting them out again. So maybe you're working on something. Maybe you're still manifesting from last month. We just like to refresh those and reset them out, voice them, and especially to write them down. When you can write them down and put them in the physical form, it's going to help you to manifest. So we have that intensity. And of course, everybody's probably already heard we go into Mercury retrograde this week. Yes. And that is in Scorpio too. So we have all this intensity. Scorpio is that energy where it likes to be in its cave, but then it'll come out. And sometimes when it comes out, that stinger comes out too. So it can be very direct and it can be very to the point. And lots of times that can be hard for a lot of people. All right. But it is a thing. Uh, it is a good thing in terms of like really getting to the heart of the matter. So with the Mercury retrograde energy, a lot of what we're doing this week is kind of going back to go forward, reviewing what we need to do in order to move it forward, refreshing those ideas in order to move it forward. All right. Also, lots of times when we talk about the Scorpio energy, we can't help but also look at like relationships, the intensity, the intimacy, the sexual energy, all that energy can be very intense and it can force us to really look at what it is that we're doing. All right. I know many people I've talked to lately have been bringing this up in conversation that this is what's going on. And even these last two days, Friday, Saturday has been really intense, dark of the moon, all of this energy coming up. So now we have the opportunity to start working through the energy. I know that new moon energy coming in tonight, a lot of us are going to feel a little bit better from some of that intensity. But again, we still need to focus our energy so that we can understand what it is going on. Really important as we work through this. So I really think the theme of this week is to kind of go back to go forward. Like what is going on? Ask those deeper parts of yourself and your questions so that you can open up and make those changes. And I know for many people, including myself, we've been going through lots of changes in 2019. We really have lots of transformation has been going on. It's that bridge year. And now here we are, we're coming to the end of the year. And so we do stop and say, where have I been spending my time? 
What have I been doing? What's working and what's not? And so we start to reevaluate and look at that part of us. And also too, I think it's important spiritually to look at where's your growth? What have you come through this year that has helped you to move through these changes and to grow a little bit more with where you are? All right, we can go through life and not look at these things, but sometimes when we do take the time to stop and look at it, we can recognize that, yeah, we have been through a lot. Yes, we are going through changes, and that also helps us to really own those changes that we're going through. So that is really the intensity that we're going through this week. Tonight will be a great time after we get off this to take a few moments before you go to bed and just ask yourself, what are my new intentions for this month? Or what are those intentions that I can bring forward again this month? And then write them down. All right. A lot of people say you have up to like 10 new intentions that you can write down. So what do you want to manifest during this next cycle of the moon? What is it for you? And with that Mercury retrograde, and a lot of people go, oh no, Mercury retrograde, we get all dramatic. But really we don't have to. We don't have to get dramatic about it at all. We can just recognize and really embrace, make friends with the fact that yes, Mercury is offering you this opportunity what is your communications with others? What are you working on? What can you reevaluate? I also think it's a great time. I always say this to like renew, refresh, recycle, clean up some of that stuff. We all tend to accumulate. And here we are at the end of the year. What have you accumulated during this year? And especially since the last retrograde that you can let go of. And those are the things that we're going to be looking at this week as we move through. So Monday, tomorrow, you're going to feel a little bit better, especially if you had a little bit of trouble moving into the weekend. Maybe you felt a little bit of that dark of the moon. So Monday is going to be still in the new moon energy. We will towards the later part of the day, I think it is move into some Sagittarius energy, which is going to be a little bit more grounding. You know, Scorpio's water. Sagittarius, as we move through the cycle, then we start to move into a little bit more grounding and you'll feel a little bit more confident about the work that you're doing. So we're going to see that come forward as well. Wednesday is pretty good too. Keep working on it. We do have some shifts coming up. So just keep Monday, Tuesday is a good day. That's a productive day. It's kind of like last week, the good productive days, get your work done. Then we have that energy on Thursday coming in. It's a little scary. Not really, just Halloween. Halloween comes up. It's always an interesting time. I know for me, it's always held some interesting energy that like what's real, what's not. The spirit world, the veils are very much thinning because then we go into the All Souls Day, All Saints Day, Day of the Dead. We have all that kind of energy coming forward this week. We also go into the time change towards next Sunday, right? So all of that is shifting around. And if you just take a moment and notice, you will see the trees are changing, the weather is shifting, the light is shifting. All of this is coming forward, and that includes the thinning of the veils. The spirit world comes in even greater. You have the opportunity to really open up to that spirit energy. Ask questions. Ask for directions. If someone has passed recently in your own life, reach out. Like, call them in. Call that guidance in for you. Yes, you can do that. It doesn't have to be weird or dramatic, but just ask and honor all those that have come before you. Really important as we move towards that end of the week. We have all that going on. Vedic astrology, we have Diwali, the lights. We have all that energy, and we're starting to see all this come forward. We are in the season of harvest, right? So we do look at what has our life been about. So we're going to feel a lot of that energy come forward as we start to move through this next week. We have that Mercury retrograde, which is going to shift us up a little bit. We have the t time change, which to me, that's always weird, right? When we shift that time, it's like sets us up for a different kind of thing. And we feel it. We feel it in the body. All of that. And we're really going to start to feel that seasonal change. That's for sure. So as you move through the week, be very be very aware of what you're doing at the beginning of the week. Start to know Mercury's going to shift around. Start to watch your communication. Start to open up more and more. Don't get caught in the drama, but get caught in the ability to really open up and look at what those communications are for you. All right, so that's our guidance for the week. I think the theme really is like just kind of starting to go back to go forward, right? Review what you have to move it forward. All of that energy, and especially the Scorpio energy, helps you to go deep. All right, last week we talked about a few of the stones, and I've really been working with them. I've got these beautiful rainbow hematites. I love them. They have this magnetic energy. The hematite helps you to filter out. The rainbows open up your, your aura. So even when you feel a little dark, these can help you to do that. So I thought about bringing those out as well. So let's just take a moment and bring our energy together and focus for this week ahead, all right? Wherever you are, if you can, take a nice deep inhale. Maybe close your eyes for a moment. Inhaling. 
and exhaling. And just call your energy in from the week. Call it back as you take another deep inhale up the body and exhale, sending it all the way back down deep into the earth. Inhaling and exhaling, lighting a little sage. As we go to open up this energy, calling in your spirit. As we call in, feel the energy coming in, call back the spiritual body. Feel that alignment, shoulders and shoulders, hips and hips. Feel the energy aligning, all the scattered energy from the week. Just pull it back in, pull it back in, pull it back in. As we take this time, we call in our masters, our teachers, the archangels. Call in your spirit guides. Feel that alignment coming in. In the medicine wheel, we find ourselves in the direction of the west where we honor this season of fall. In the west where the sun sets, where we look at our day and our life, all the many experiences we recognize the falling leaves and the transformation it brings us. And we honor all that we've been through. Let's anchor in the directions for guidance and protection to the west, the north, the east, and the south. Above us, below us, calling in to the very center, calling in your spirit. Feel that alignment. Setting your intention for this week right into that third eye center. Just set that intention for you this week. Take another deep inhale. And as you exhale, release the intention out and notice what it is you would feel as those intentions come in and embody that energy for you. Peace, happiness, abundance, prosperity, whatever your intentions are, and just feel the energy radiating out. Let that come forward for you and just take a moment and place your hands right here on your throat, your neck, your jaws. This is the energy for communication and just allow yourself to open up through here. Take a deep inhale and exhale. Feel the energy running through. Feel the warmth of the hands on the throat. And just feel the energy. Allow it to open up for communications as we approach the Mercury retrograde. Know that you can work through this and embrace it. Take another deep inhale and exhale. Feel the quiet coming in. Any anxiety for the week, just let it go. Know that you have everything you need in this very moment. Know that you can return to this peaceful energy as you start your week. Inhaling and exhaling. Feel that alignment coming in for you. As you bring the awareness back, feel the feet on the floor, grounding your energy, coming back. Nice. Opening up the energy as we go to look at the cards for this week. Just looking to see everybody there. Hey, Lucy. Hey, Lucky. Hey, Heather. Hey, y'all. Welcome. Thanks for joining me. All right. So I'm going to show the cards for this week. And if you'd like me to pull a card and you have a particular question, please put that question in as well. And I have a surprise. I have the new archetype deck from the Wild Unknown. All right. We drew one. I don't know it yet. I'm learning it. All right, so the first card for all of us this week is the Ten of Pentacles. This is a great card. This is showing us how the cycle is coming complete, all right? Really great card. It's Pentacles. It's like fulfillment. It's like, you know, you're doing your work and things are working out. Ten is also like one, a completion beginning in the tarot. We see this. So as you move through this week, especially before going into that Mercury Retrograde, honor all the work that you've done. This is going to teach you what you also need to open up to. So in this card, she has all the colors of the rainbows. Whenever she has all the colors in her card, you know that this is a rich, a meaningful, a deep card. Also with the 10, you'll see right here in the center is that 10th pentacle. So we go in deep and that's that Scorpio energy as well. Go in deep and appreciate the work that you have. All right. So that's our guidance for this week as we do come into some of that completion energy. So if you chose card number one, this is a beautiful card too. It's an ace of cups. All right. This is like that new beginning. So as you work to get to this completion, you're going to find that love for yourself first and foremost is the number one thing. When you have that love for yourself, you can radiate it out to others. So there is a newness coming in for you if you chose this card that will help you to find that completion and appreciation of yourself and all the work that you do. All right, if you chose card number two, this is always an interesting card. It's a five, five of pentacles. So sometimes fives are our challenge card, right? 
We've, we've, we've opened up a little bit. We have the balance of fours. Now we move into the five. So we shift. And this card does indicate some healing that needs to be done. And being in the pentacles, this could be in the physical body. All right, some work that you may need to do. So it's a good time to really notice what it is that you do have going on, not only in your physical body and your physical work. And what can you put some attention into so that then you can rise up to get to this point of it as well. So this card does indicate some work needs to be done. There is some change and some shifting which is okay. So refresh your energy and refresh that healing part of what needs to come forward. If you chose card number three, this is never too much of a favorite card either. This is the three of swords and this is about healing as well. But the swords again is our mental plane. So what are you creating for yourself that is making it hard for you? So check in with your thoughts. All right. Check in and see where can you open up a little bit, calm the chatter of the mind and do some healing around that aspect for yourself. It's a little different than the five of pentacles because this is mostly indicating maybe in the body, maybe in your work. And this is indicating a little bit more in the mental plane. Also with this card, it's also sometimes we can find ourselves caught in that victim energy. So careful that you don't allow yourself to be caught in that and appreciate gratitude, 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 what you have going on. And that's going to help get you to this. As you clear out the chatter of the mind and recognize that what are you creating? Again, this is the mental plane. Where's the harmful energy? So threes can be a little bit challenging, but what can you tend to let go of so that you can get back to that prosperity in your own life? All right. So we do have a little bit of challenge with a couple of these cards, but that's what we work through, right? That's what gives us the guidance to look beneath the surface. All right. So let me know if you have any questions, if you would love a card, and if you have a particular question that you want to ask about as well. All right, so as I let the comments catch up here, I'll just have a few announcements of what is going on. Saturday, Reiki 1, I still have some openings. I'm going to be teaching at Practice Works this time. I'm very excited to be teaching over there. Let me know if you'd like to join me. We have a few spots left. All right, I did not get a podcast out this week, just catching up from the intuition event. But I am going to repost my um, podcast. I'll probably do it tomorrow or Wednesday about the the veils are thinning very timely as well and then i will have a new podcast on on saturday if you haven't had a chance to catch up with my last ones do so and then the other big thing for me is the event in atlanta yes if you want to come join a wellness event weekend it's called a tune i'm one of their healing artists very excited about that hit me up if you'd like some more information really excited i've been working so much on getting stuff out. I'm so excited. I've been making these really beautiful little sacred bags for our cards. Very excited to be back crafting. Yes, it is an important aspect of me. All right. So let's see who would like a card. Cindy, I see you're here. You've asked for a card over here on Instagram. Okay. And then over here, Ernest. Kate would like a card, Lucky would like a card, and Heather too. All right, we got lots going on. All right, yay, Leah, you did sign up. I'm super happy to have you in the class as well. All right, so Sin, here we go. This one is for you. All right, this is the Father of Wands. So this is an interesting card. Whenever we have the People card, we always wonder, is this an aspect of ourselves or an aspect of somebody else around you? So the Wands is our passion and our desire. All right, Snake is transformative energy. And in this particular card, you see she has the, she has the lightning bolt. So there can be a flash of information. And so for you, I believe this is talking about going deeper into that flash of information that talks about what is your passion and desire in your life right now. All right. The father energy brings a little bit of that male energy in there forward. So being a little bit more action oriented about bringing that passion and desire for you. So look for that aha moment. All right. A really good card. I know you've been asking some of these questions yourself. All right. Good card to confirm that. All right. Let's see. I was over here on Facebook. Ernest, I have you and then Kate next. So Ernest, this card is for you. This is the justice card. So this is really about, this is about looking at both sides. You've got the black and the white. This is also about releasing all of that judgment. All right. So being able to see both sides. Also too, the thing that comes forward in this card is recognizing that every action has a reaction. So sometimes we can go about life and just do stuff and not think that it has much of a big deal, but be sure to be checking in. Like, is there some kind of decision you need to make? Is there some action you need to do? And what are those ripple effects that will come forward? All right. That's what this card is about for you. All right, Kay, it was good to see you Wednesday night in class. This card 
Okay, this is the devil. Some people get like, oh no, the devil. But this card is also about self-sabotage. All right, that's how I like to see it. All right, look at the feet burning up here. Where are you self-sabotaging your life? What are the addictions that you're holding on to? Now, addictions can be anything. Addicted to our mind, addiction to habits, addiction to so many things that we have. Food, eating, gambling, all those things. But I always like to look at it as self-sabotage. All right, so what are you doing that's getting in your way of moving forward? That's the question for you to look at as you move through this week, all right? Let me know how that resonates. All right, Heather, a card for you, and then Lucky, and we'll go back to Instagram. All right, so Heather, this is the Five of Swords. So this is Fives are change, all right? Fives can be challenging, right? But Swords is our passion and desire. So it does look like everything's up in the air, and I know our last conversation probably feels that way too. So know that as everything goes up in the air, it gives you that opportunity to say, okay, what do I want to bring in? All right, so there is a lot going on in the air. This is passions and desires. So take the time to find the challenge for you to understand how are things going to settle out. All right, sometimes we have to surrender first in order to get to that point. All right, so yes, passions and desires are being challenged for you. And as you move through this, know that it will come into a point that feels more grounding. All right, how does that resonate? Let me know. All right, those bags are lovely. Yes, I've been having so much fun making them. All right, Lucky. Lucky, I miss you guys. I don't know if we're going to make it up in November either, but December, we'll be back up to the sweat lodges. All right, love this card, Two of Pentacles. This is all about transformation. Things are working out. Keep doing what you're doing. Look at the beautiful rainbow in there. That's an infinite potential. All right, so this is like a new project in the physical forms of what's going on. Keep doing what you're doing. It's having the ability to transform. Beautiful card. I love this card. So keep doing that work. It's really going well for you. Let me know how that resonates. All right, Millie. Millie. Hey, Millie. We have our class Tuesday night. All right. The three of cups. This is a celebration card. I love when this one comes up. So this gives you all the rights to go out with your girlfriends and celebrate. And this just isn't just anybody. People that have meaning, go celebrate something that you've done. When we celebrate in this kind of way, it builds our confidence. It builds the work that we do and we own the work that we're doing. All right. So go celebrate, Millie. Let me know how you're going to do that. All right. All right, let's see who else has joined. T from The Intuitive Woman. Hey, T. T has a great podcast, The Intuitive Woman Podcast. We just saw each other last weekend. Love to see you here. All right, a card for you, T. T is the mother of pentacles. All right, so this is has a mother quality to it, but it's also pentacles, so it's of the physical, it's of the home, it's of that nurturing. All right, I know you have a busy month coming up. I know November, I don't think you'll have a chance to stop at all. But know that no matter where you go, you can still nurture and do what you're doing. So being sure that you are taking care of some of the physical aspects of what you need to do, not only for your family, but especially for yourself as well. All right, so being sure to take care of those aspects for you. No matter where you go, you can nurture and love, but taking that energy for yourself, pulling it in. And again, the pentacles is in the physical realm. All right. So that can also mean your physical health, your body, that kind of energy for you. All right. Really nurturing, really important. Don't neglect it for everybody else. All right. Really good card. All right. In, in a, in an academy. I don't know who you are, but welcome. Thank you for joining me. So a card for you. All right. Daughter of Cups. All right, so this is that energy of that, that daughter energy is that innocence. That cup energy is the emotional energy. It's creativity. Look at the beautiful rainbow that comes here and the reflection of what you do. So opening the heart and having that creative, to, that creative energy, it's really great under the Scorpio moon, especially with the energy of the um, intuition, that Scorpio energy coming forward and opening the heart of love. Swans have that really that long lasting energy. So looking at ways to be very creative in all that you do, opening up your heart unconditionally, really important, opening that up as well. Hey, Mayor, how are you? I forgot to do our um, archetype. I'll do that in a minute. Brand new cards. All right. I don't know. Ava, did I get a card for you? Mayor, this is the nine of pentacles. All right. So this is about, this is like one step before the 10. So keep doing what you're doing. I feel like last week you got the tens, which is kind of interesting. And if that's so, Mayor, give me a thumbs up. I think that this card just says, maybe go back and review one more thing before coming forward again. And which is exactly what Mercury retrograde is all about. So sometimes we have to go back, notice what we're doing in order to go forward. So kind of review what's going on in the physical form and your work and your job and all that you're doing. Let me know if that 
that makes sense. All right, Mary. I feel like last week we, we drew the 10. Ava, did I do a card for you? Great card, please. Okay, good. All right. Yes, Tina says it resonates. Alex, I see you're here too. So Ava, this card is for you. All right, Ava, this is the Hierophant. So this is a card. Some people don't find this to be the favorite one. I do love the interpretation in this card and this deck. I love the idea of that calling forward. Look at the lightning bolt and what is the key. So this is a card to remind you not to give your power away. Open up for that spiritual guidance. I know you have a lot for your own. Sometimes it's good to check in with the teacher. And it's actually reminding you not to give your power away. What is the key to your own intuitive ability, to your own spiritual development? All right, very important. And again, lots of times when we see the Hierophant coming up, it does remind us to check in with our spiritual teachers. So yeah, give me a call if you want. All right, that would be great. Alex. Alex, the judgment card. So this is not so much about judgment, but releasing and having, having non-judgment, really. Opening up to a greater choice of who you are. Releasing that darkness and opening up. It's like the phoenix rising. So looking for those aha moments, all right? Opening up to a deeper part of who you are, all right? And letting go, definitely letting go of all the kind of judgments that you hold on yourself. A good card for forgiveness. This reminds us of forgiveness when this one comes forward as well, all right? Yes, I think it makes sense for work and school. Good, Mara. Okay, thank you. All right, Ava, let me know how that resonated with you. Um, Callie, hi, Tap Scott. I don't know who you are, but welcome. Thanks for joining me tonight. All right, so we got the Eight of, of Swords here. So this is an interesting card. This is a card that reminds you not to close yourself off, all right? Don't go into your own cocoon, especially if you have different thoughts or different viewpoints. It's important that you stay open, all right, and not to close yourself off. If we close ourselves off, we could get isolated and despondent. So make sure that you still stay strong to your ideas, stay strong to who you are, and don't feel afraid to share those ideas, all right? Let me know how that resonates as well. All right, let's see if I've missed anybody. I did want to share this, um, okay, I did want to share this archetype card. I thought these are really beautiful, um, and I'll get a card. Definitely resonates. Everything is up in the air, but all opportunity. Yay, Heather, good. And that's a great way to look at it. All right, self-sabotage, we don't want to go there, right, Kate? So look at it, and it could just be in the mental chatter. It could be something like that, all right? All right, and I'm going to read you a card, and then I'm going to talk about the archetypes for this month. I love these new cards. They're really, I just got them, so I'm just learning them. All right, Anna, this is for you. It's the three of three of um, wands. All right, so this is a card that brings together a lot of passion and desire, enabling you to know that things are working together. They're coming together. Go deeper. Look at the beautiful rainbow within this. So now it's the opportunity to take a step back and then go deeper. All right, you're done, doing some good work. Keep it going. Keep that passion and desire and go a little deeper in. So this card, these are the new archetype cards from the Wild Unknown, Kim Kranz, her work. She has brand new, they're round, they're beautiful drawings. Again, she went through lots of transformation. Her story is beautiful as well. So I drew one for all of us for the archetype, and it's the kiss. So this is a beautiful energy for that Scorpio energy. This is reminding you to look deeper and let the ability to open up to your intimate relationships. Let it grow. Go deeper in those conversations. Go deeper in your spirituality. Go deeper in your kisses, all right? A beautiful card for that Scorpio energy. This is the archetype energy. When working the archetype, it gives us a little guidance to help us through that week, all right? So I think this is a really great card. The kiss. I'll be talking more and more about these cards as I learn them. There is the study in learning them. All right, if I missed anybody, do let me know. I love seeing everybody here. I get so excited. It just fires me up talking and having the opportunity to offer this guidance from our cards. When we work with the cards, so much can be uncovered. Really important. All right. Happy new moon, Tina. Thank you for joining me tonight. Yay. It is a new moon. In about another hour or so, I believe it comes in. I think it's like 9, 30, 10, something like that. Take the time before you go to sleep tonight and just write down. A few things, up to 10, that you can manifest for yourself. Either refresh what you're working on or something new, whatever it is for you. And take the time to put it into the physical form. Really important. Do a little ritual. Take a bath. Get your crystals out. And just take a moment to reflect on what we've talked about and also this energy of Scorpio that is coming forward that can help you Make some changes. Make some transformations. We're coming to the end of the year. In 2020, there's so much already being talked about, which we'll discuss as the year starts getting closer and closer to the end. 
All right. So check it out. Come join me with my Reiki class. All right. If you haven't taken Reiki, it's a great opportunity, a great tool to bring into 2020 with you as well. And yes, I'll be doing some podcasting as we come around. I did skip a week. Sometimes we just got to do that. All right, guys, have a great week. Be grounded. Don't let Mercury scare you off. Embrace your Mercury retrograde and all the many things that you can refresh and renew and redo with your life. Yes, Scorpio can be intense, but when we know it and we can go deeper, we can grow and that's what we do. All right. Have a great week, everybody. Thanks again for joining me to your spirit. Namaste.